This is All India Radio. As part of our special programs to mark the birth centenary of Sri Mysovas Devacharya, we now bring you a talk by the Governor of Madras, His Highness Sri Jayacham Rajavadya. It gives me great pleasure to participate in the centenary celebrations in honor of Sangeetha Kalanidhi, Sangeetha Shastra Visharada, Sri Mysur Vasudeva Acharya. The occasion gives me the opportunity to express my feelings of gratitude to my Guru, who taught me music for over five years. Besides the Acharya's ability to sing, his imagination to compose and his excellence in scholarship had won for him the esteem and affection of the Mysore Royal House. Perhaps it would not be inappropriate for me to say that it was my revered grandfather, Sri Chamarajavadir, who discovered the musical talents of young Vasudeva Acharya and sent him to Patnam Subramanya Ayer for learning the great art of music. Sri Vasudeva Acharya was born on May 28, 1865 in Mysore. He had his initial training in music under Vidwan Subbaraya and Veena Padmanabhaya. He learned many lessons too from the illustrious Vainika Vidwan Seshana of Mysore. However, his real guru in music was Patnam Subramanya Ayer of Tiruvayar. He stayed in this sacred place for six years and mastered the divine art under the affectionate and able guidance of his chosen teacher. From this musician of great repute, Vasudevacharya learnt the art of elaborating a raga in a grand style of singing scientifically Pallavi and Tana and of rendering the songs in an artistic manner. He was particularly known in later years for rendering Madhyamakala Tanam and Pallavi with brilliance and skill. Vasudevacharya was a great and prolific composer of musical compositions in Sanskrit and Telugu languages. He has many songs to his credit and about 150 songs have been published in two volumes called Vasudeva Kirtana Manjari. Also, nine of his compositions are to be found in a book called Navaratna Raga Malika, published by the Kalakshetra of Madras. He has edited also a few compositions of Sadashivara of Mysore. The Kalakshetra entrusted the Acharya with the task of setting music to a few episodes of the Ramayana, and this great virtuoso readily accepted the work and did it most exquisitely. And many a dance drama today is delightful because of his effort. The ruling kings of South India conferred upon him titles, and many music institutions of India honored him. His ability as a musician and his powers of musical composition were readily recognized, and he was called upon to preside over the Music Academy Conference held in the year 1935. He was awarded the title Sangeetha Kalanithi by the organizers of the conference. A few years later, he received the presidential award for Carnatic Music Vocal. The Acharya led a simple and dedicated life. Nothing gave him pleasure than talking about the subtleties of music and musical compositions. Though retiring by nature, he was the first to join any cultural group that chose to discuss music. And on such occasions, <coughs> one discovered his creative abilities, his scholarship and his skill in composing music. He preferred to be an Adho Pasaka, always, and this made him obey scrupulously the traditional laws of Sadachara. When he was not composing, the Acharya chose to read a Sanskrit classic or a literary work of a high order in a regional language. Sri Vasudevacharya presented his compositions in delightful and pleasing musical setting. 
simplicity and grandeur are the characteristic features of his diction. His phrases are expressive, poetic and meaningful and make the bhava element in the composition most pronounced. The Acharya was greatly influenced by his predecessors in the world of Carnatic music. His Sanskrit scholarship and artistic sensibilities enabled him to impart to his compositions the necessary literary touch which made them most charming. Thus a fine example of literary charm can be found in the song Manasa Vachasa Shirasa, a composition in Begada. The Navaratna Malika published by the Kalakshetra of Madras shows that Vidwan Vasudevacharya was an outstanding composer of Carnatic music. His work indicates how music and language should be blended in a perfect musical composition. He felt proud to present Chitta Swaras along with the compositions. It is no wonder, therefore, that today leading musicians take great pride in singing the songs of Sri Vasudevacharya. Sri Vasudevacharya was as good at singing as he was good at composing. A reference has already been made to the stately Madhyamakala style of singing for which he became famous. There is yet another notable feature of Sri Vasudevacharya to be mentioned, and that is his contribution to the development of Kannada biographical literature. In the year 1955, he published his book in Kannada, Na Kanda Kala Vidaru, in which he recorded in racy, vivid and charming style all his experiences in the world of music. Mysore Vasudevacharya was blessed with long life. It was a life full of achievement and glory. Posterity will remember with gratitude all that the Acharya, who is rightly called Abhinavatyagaraja, has done for the spread and development of Carnatic and Indian music. Future generations will also remember with gratitude the great lesson taught by the Acharya that self-realization is possible by Nadu Pasana. You were listening to a talk by His Highness Sri Jayachandra Jawadia, the Governor of Madras, in connection with the birth centenary of Sri Mysore Vasudevacharya. This broadcast came to you from the South Indian stations of All India Radio. Music